In this video, we're going to be covering GameCube and Wii emulation on the Xbox Series X and S using the new standalone Dolphin build. The time has finally come for those of us that use emulation on Xbox Series X and S to have a proper Dolphin experience and not that awful excuse that is known as RetroArch Dolphin. Yeah, I went there. So thanks to the efforts of Sir Mangler and anyone who helped collaborate, we now have a proper Dolphin port to UWP. It is still in beta, so it is kind of uh, interesting to use right now, and I can't wait to see how it improves. But what we do get out of this program is a full-fledged Dolphin experience, Uber shaders, video backends, HD texture packs, multiplayer, like everything works. Online multiplayer for Fantasy Star. But setup can be a bit involved, so that's what I'm hoping to cover right now for ya. But let's go ahead and dive in. Now as we get started, this video is for dev mode. So if you need help getting dev mode set up or installed, you can check out my RetroArch setup guide. The latest version has the updated methods of getting dev mode set up. So a link to this will be in the description below, and it also includes a number of great things to set up for your USB drive, and how to get RetroArch installed if you haven't done that already. So again, link to this in the description below. Next, we're going to need to download the latest version of the Dolphin emulator for UWP from Sir Mangler. So, link to this download page will be in the description below. But there's two versions available. There's an external storage version and an internal storage version. And I wholeheartedly recommend external storage, especially if you want to do things like HD texture packs. If you choose internal, you're only going to be limited to the 30 gigs of usable space in the Q drive, so you will not be able to do a whole lot. And then anytime there's an update, you're going to have to manually back everything up and then restore it there, whereas on USB, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So again, wholeheartedly recommend the external storage version, so I'm going to download this one right here. And with Dolphin downloaded, the next thing we're going to need are GameCube and Wii games that we want to emulate. So GameCube games can be in a number of formats. You can have them compressed as GCZ, leave them in GCM format as the way you dump them from uh, CleanRip, uh, rename them ISO. So if you want to save the most space, GCZ is a good format to use, and you can compress those using the standalone PC version of Dolphin. Or use NKit. And then for Wii games, they could be in a variety of formats as well. You've got ISO, you could compress them into CISO, or WBFS. And then just as a heads up with this beta version of Dolphin for UWP, the file browser can't see WAD files. Like, even though these should run just fine, the file browser can't see them, so WAD files are out of the picture for this version. Hopefully the next version has that fixed. But if you have a large physical collection of Wii and GameCube games, you can rip those using a modded Wii. Or, you know, you can resort to the Googles and search them up. Don't really care how you do it, just don't ask me for illegal download links as always. But link to this will be in the description below for anyone interested. So once you have your game sourced, we just need to add them to our USB storage device. So, plug your USB drive into your computer, and then just copy your games over to it. So I have a games folder here that I used for all my RetroArch stuff. So I already have my games transferred over, but I mean, there we go. It's just, you just do that. And once you have your games placed on USB, we are ready to begin installing Dolphin. So boot up your Xbox and get it to the dev mode dashboard. And once our Xbox is booted up into dev mode, make note of your remote access IP and then just access your Xbox's device portal. So under my games and apps, click on add, Choose File, and then choose Dolphin, and then just click on Next. And we don't have any dependencies on this one, so just click on Start. And once it is finished installing, we can go ahead and close out of the device portal. We don't need it anymore from this point on in the video. So now over on your Xbox, make sure you get your USB drive plugged in, select the Dolphin emulator, and press the back button on your controller. Scroll down to View Details and change the UWP type from an app to a game. And then from here, just go up and restart your console to make sure the change takes effect. And once the Xbox is finished rebooting, you could launch into Dolphin Emulator. This will create our Dolphin Emulator folder on our USB drive that we need to be able to configure things. So if you want to, you can load up a game right now and just see how things go. There should be a default controller profile you can use to play through most games, and you'll be on default settings, so it's just going to be native resolution, things like that, but you could try loading something up and just see that it is working. 
All right, so unfortunately for me, the default built-in control scheme is actually not working right now, so I can't even give you a gameplay demonstration right now. This is something that can happen, unfortunately. So, that's all right. We'll just go ahead and quit out of Dolphin now, because we're going to configure the program to be more to our liking using our PC. So, quitting out of Dolphin, and from here, just get your USB drive taken out of the Xbox and back into your PC. Yes, there is a lot of back and forth involved with this one. So once you have your USB drive plugged back into your PC, you will see that there is now a new Dolphin emulator folder inside of it that has all of our uh, Dolphin system folders and config folders and save folders and all that good stuff. So that is exactly what we want to see. So to begin configuring Dolphin for our Xbox Series X and S, we need to get the standalone version of Dolphin. And this build is based on version 17.891, so we are going to use the same build on PC. So you don't have to, you can use the newer one, it should be just fine, but just for uh, absolute compatibility's sake, we're going to go with 17.891. So download link for this will be in the description below. So with Dolphin downloaded, just get it extracted. There we go. And then just get it opened up, open up the Dolphin folder, and we are going to make a new text file in here and name it Portable. There we go. Now launch Dolphin. All right. And you'll see that a new user folder has just been created inside of our Dolphin folder here. And it matches the same one that we have on our USB drive. Excellent. So I'm just going to close out a Dolphin real quick. Open back up my USB drive. I'm going to open up my Dolphin emulator folder on my USB drive. And I'm just going to copy everything that's in here into the user folder of my Dolphin. My uh, PC Dolphin. There we go. This way it just guarantees that the settings that we're starting with in PC Dolphin match that that our Xbox already has assigned. Anyway, once that's done, just launch back into Dolphin. So the first thing we're going to do is get our controls to actually work. So click on the controller tab here. So first up, GameCube, you've got your standard controller. So get your Xbox controller plugged into your PC and then click on the configure tab. And then in the drop down box, you should see your Xbox controller showing up. So there's a couple different options to choose from. The one you want to pick to make it actually work with the Series X and S version of Dolphin is WG Input Xbox Controller. And then just go through and assign your buttons as you want them. This is personal preference, so just choose them however you want. And there we go, our controller is now ready to go. But if you want to have your thumbsticks match those of a GameCube's a little bit better, you can click on the Calibrate button on both the control stick and the C-stick. But if you do decide to do this, make sure that you are using the controllers that you calibrate in that slot every time, otherwise you could mess up things. Like, not all controllers are going to be the same. But it'll just match your controller's thumbstick range to better suit that of an actual GameCube. So you just go through and rotate it a few times. And there we go. That one is now calibrated. And then we could do the same thing with the other stick. So as you can see, this stick doesn't really go down as far as the other ones, not unless you press really hard. So you can see my Xbox controller is just kind of funky. But that's one of the reasons why you'd calibrate it. So that way you get the proper ranges and if you plan on doing multiplayer, you can turn on more controllers and configure them as you see fit. So I'm going to turn on a second controller here. And I'm going to get a second controller plugged into my PC real quick. There we go. Now I'm going to configure it. And I'm going to choose the WG input 1. So 0 is player 1, 1 is player 2. So I'm going to choose player 2. And I'm going to assign the buttons for this controller as well. And then for player two, I'm gonna calibrate it as well. And again, make sure that when you calibrate a controller, that is the controller slot you're always going to be using it on, otherwise it can impact things. So you can see that this controller doesn't have as funky of ranges as my other controller that I'm using in port one. But there we go. 
So cool, now I have two controller ports enabled and ready to go for GameCube games. And then you could go through and do the same thing for Wii remotes, and Wii remotes are going to be a bit more annoying, just because of how many different options you have available to use. So just going to choose my WG input 0, so for player 1, Xbox controller, and just start assigning my buttons here. And then you can assign some hotkeys to choose between sideways or upright toggle. I'm going to make it left bumper and right, make it a sideways toggle, and then left bumper and up to make it upright. And I have it set to a nunchuck extension, so I'm just going to configure that real quick as well. So here we go. So up, down, left, right. And then I'm just going to calibrate that stick again to make sure that we get the proper ranges. There we go. And then C and Z. I'm just going to put those on my bumpers. There we go. And then you have all the motion input stuff that you need to configure as well, depending on the game. And unfortunately, there's just not a lot of options for an Xbox controller, so you're just going to have to really go in and fine-tune it as you see fit. So I set some accelerometer stuff to my right analog stick and thumbstick buttons, just so we could play things like New Super Mario Bros. Wii here as a demo in a second. But once you have it set, you can just close it out. And then you could do the same thing if you want extra Wii remotes, you can enable more emulated Wii remotes. But I'm just going to leave it here for the time being. But just going to close out of the controller tab because we are now done in there. And we will now be able to control our games. Alright, so next up, the graphics tab. This is probably what a lot of you are going to be interested in. So for the back end, we are going to choose either Direct 3D 11 or 12. 12 should theoretically have a slight performance advantage over Direct 3D 11 but you can choose either one. And then if you want to change aspect ratios, you could do so here. So leaving it on auto works fine for most use cases, but you could force it to a 16 by nine stretch or four by three. So personal preference there, but you can enable things like V-Sync. If you want to have the FPS show up in the corner, you can have that there. But under shader compilation, we want to choose hybrid Uber shaders and enable compile shaders before starting. So that way we just don't get any shader compilation stutter like you were seeing on the RetroArch version of Dolphin. You could also try exclusive Uber shaders. This will probably work better on the Xbox Series X than S, but it can be quite demanding, whereas hybrid Uber shaders should work fine for most use cases. Next, under the Enhancements tab, we'll choose our resolution. So I'm gonna go with 1440p on my Series S. So if you're on Series X or S, you could try doing 4K, see what happens. But I know for a fact that 1440p works great on the Series S, so I'm just going to run with it. So try them out for yourself, see what happens. Then you could choose an anti-aliasing method if you want. Anisotropic filtering. Also some post-processing effects. But I'm just going to change my internal resolution personally here. Now under hacks, you shouldn't need to mess with anything in here. And lastly, advanced tabs. So in here, this is where you can enable things like load custom textures if you are interested in using them. So we'll load, we'll turn on the load custom texture tab and we will prefetch custom textures. And there we go. So if you want to use custom textures, head over to the Dolphin Forms, find their HD texture pack thread, then just look through the games that they have texture packs available for and download one. So for example, I am going to download this Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes texture pack. So there we go. So download links, cool. So I went ahead and got that downloaded earlier, but I'm just going to extract it. And inside the texture folder, you should have a folder that is named after the game's code. So for Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, it's GGSEA4. And inside will be all of your textures. So to load these up into our Xbox Series X and S version of Dolphin, all we need to do, go back into your USB drive, go in the Dolphin emulator folder, find the load folder, textures, and then drag it right on in. Now that HD texture pack for Twin Snakes is ready to go when I load up the game. And now just for some fun little extras for you. So if you want to have the GameCube boot animation appear on your Xbox Series X and S version of Dolphin, for example, First, you'll need to source an IPL.bin file. 
So I have a video on the channel showing you how to dump the IPL file if desired. Or you could use Google to find it. Again, I don't care which way you do it. Just don't ask me for illegal download links. And first up, we're going to add this to our user folder in the PC version of Dolphin so we can configure it. So the IPL bin file goes in your GC folder under the region of the IPL that it is. So mine is an American IPL, so I'm going to put it in the USA folder, just like this. Now I'm just going to close out a Dolphin and relaunch it, so that way you can see that there is an IPL file there. Now under the Config tab, we're going to select GameCube, and you'll see that there is a check mark for Skip Main Menu. So this means it will skip the GameCube Main Menu when we load up a game. So if we want that animation to appear, we just uncheck this. And there we go. Now when we boot up a GameCube game, the GameCube menu will appear. And we can manage memory cards and things like that within that menu. Speaking of memory cards, under the device settings on this GameCube tab, you'll notice that slot A is set as a GCI folder. And that is awesome. That means we never really have to worry about running out of save space. But what I would recommend doing is under slot B, create a standard memory card. This is important for games like Fantasy Star Online if you want to create a network configuration file because it will crash when using a GCI folder. But having a standard memory card under slot B fixes that right up. And speaking of Fantasy Star Online, if you want to play it online, under SP1 here, change this from nothing to a broadband adapter HLE. And then click on the three dot button here. And you'll notice that there's an IP address, so this is set to the Shthak private server by default. And if you play on Shthak, that's great. If you play on Silverant, you'll just need to change it over to the Silverant DNS. I'm not going to really cover it any further than that. You can check out my video on playing Fantasy Star Online through Dolphin for specifics and network configuration, how to get signed up for all of it and stuff. So a link to that will be in the description below for those interested. But I play on Shthak and Silveron, so Shthak will work for my needs here. Also under the General tab, you, if you plan on using cheats for any of your games, you can enable the cheats here. And then you can turn on Change Discs automatically. I don't think it works yet, but you can still try it. But to get cheats set up for your games, double click in your menu here. Choose your USB drive. Find your Wii and GameCube games, just so you can... Uh, get them to appear in the menu. And then to activate cheats, all you need to do is right click on a game, click on properties. Then you could go to AR codes and you can just start enabling cheats that you want to use. So let's just turn on everything unlocked for Mario Kart. Double dash, there we go. And we're just gonna close out of it there. But you can also use cheat codes to activate 60 FPS patches or widescreen patches. So for Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, under that HD texture pack thread, there was a gecko code for the USA version of the game to have widescreen. So I'm just going to copy this code in real quick. There we go. I'm going to go into the properties for Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. I'm going to go to the gecko code page, add new code. Name of the code will be widescreen. And I'm going to paste that code into the editor. Notes makes game widescreen. Sure, why not? Cool. And I'm going to save that one. And now it is enabled. Cool. Perfect. And just close out of that real quick. And with that, I am ready to move my configuration files and settings back over to my USB drive to use on the Xbox Series X and S version of Dolphin. So I'm just going to close out of this. Now in my user folder. Move that over a little bit, but I'm going to open back up my USB drive. Come back out there. There we go. And I'm just going to copy everything that's in here into my USB drive and overwrite the stuff that's already there. Now, one thing that I've been having issues with is that whenever I load up Dolphin on the Xbox Series X and S, it likes to overwrite my Dolphin INI file, which then in turn resets everything that I have just done. So what I've had to do is actually set my Dolphin INI file to read only just so it doesn't reset things because it will just make it so all these changes that I put in place don't matter. This might not be the case for everyone, but it has happened to me over numerous testing. So I just set this to read only when I need to change it. I put it back on my PC, make it non-read only. 
but I just have to do this, otherwise I don't get the results I want. So just wanted to make others aware of that. If you change all these things, you put it in, and all of a sudden nothing happened, you might need to set it to read only. But anyway, with all that set, I'm just going to go back over to my Xbox, take the USB drive out of your computer, put it back in your Xbox, plug your controllers into the Xbox. We're ready to start. All right, so back into Dolphin Emulator. USB drive, let's load up a GameCube game here real quick. So, actually, let's load up Mario Kart Double Dash so we can see that those cheat files have taken effect. And there we go, we're getting shader compilation before the game starts, so that way we don't have to worry about any stuttering happening, happening during gameplay. So the first thing worth noticing is that we have our GameCube boot animation. See our memory cards. Not that in them yet. But then we could just start the game up. There we go. And I'm getting a lot of screen tearing, so I'm gonna actually have to enable VSync here um, next time I have this on my computer. But there we go. So. I don't even have a Mario Kart Double Dash save on my memory card, but it has the it has the screen that shows up after you unlock everything, so the cheat codes are taking effect. And we got mirror mode, we have King Boo, and the Piranha Plant unlocked, so yeah, the cheat codes have taken effect. And unlike the first time I loaded up the game, the controls also work if you haven't been able to notice. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, so everything is working exactly as I set it up to. And we are running at 1440p internal resolution, so it looks a lot better than it did the first time we loaded it up as well. But just going to quit out of Dolphin real quick so we can load up another game here. And this time we're going to load up Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes just so we could show off that HD texture pack. So that's in my folder here. All right. All right. So Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. So just got to wait for shader compilation. And there we have it. The HD texture pack is loaded up. And over in the left corner there, you can see that it has cached the textures into RAM. So, I need to go back in and make a separate configuration change for Twin Snakes to force it into 16 by 9 to really take advantage of this widescreen hack that I have applied to the game. Because as you can see, things just look a little squished now instead of appearing quite right. So that's alright. Just get into gameplay here, show it off. So yes, we can tell that that widescreen code is taking effect because you can see Snake is exceptionally squished. And then that HD texture pack is making all of the text nice and crisp. And it looks really good. And now for just a quick example showing multiplayer in action. Let's load up Smash Brothers here. This is also show you how cool Uber shaders are if you have yet to experience them because you use the RetroArch version of Dolphin. But anyway. We'll just go in here. We'll load up Fountain of Dreams. And look at that, everything just works really quickly instead of it being a stuttery mess. And so there we go. Got both of my players working as intended. 
And if you set up multiple controllers instead of just two, like in my example, you should be good to go for four player action. And again, if you did the manual configuration of thumbsticks, make sure that you, you only use that controller for that slot, otherwise things might be a little funky. And now for an example of a Wii game. So again, my WAD files aren't showing up, so Mega Man 9 and 10 are out of the picture. But let's load up New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And so here we go, New Super Mario Bros. Wii working as I set it up to. Uh, except that it didn't get my motion controller set up. I didn't set up my motion controls right, so unfortunately I will need to go back in and reconfigure that. But that's just something that you're going to have to do on a game-by-game -game basis. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my USB drive plugged back into my computer so I can make some of the changes I want to get rid of things like screen tearing and any other adjustments I need to make to controls and things like that. Alright, so my USB drive popped up, so I'm just going to get that Dolphin folder open back up and launch back into PC Dolphin to make the changes that I need. So under the Graphics tab, I wanted to enable VSync. Alright, good. And then I can take this opportunity to go through and configure other things. So for example, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, if you want to enable the Hyrule Field Speed Hack, you just right click on it, go to Patches, and check mark the Hyrule Field Speed Hack. And then I wanted to give my copy of Twin Snakes a 4 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but I don't want it to affect my other games that I still want to show up in 4 by 3 So I'm going to have to add a video settings aspect ratio equals 1 setting here. So I'm just going to copy that to make my life easier. Now under Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, I'm going to go into Properties. Editor. And then down here in User Config, click on the Presets button. Editor and open in an external editor. Now that that's opened up, just gonna paste that code in here. So I don't need an auto aspect ratio there. There we go. And we're just gonna clean that up so it actually works. So there we go, video settings, aspect ratio equals one. So that'll give us a force widescreen aspect ratio. And just gonna save that real quick. There we go. And then just close out of that. And now I wanna give Rogue Squadron 2 a slight CPU underclock to help it run better on the Xbox Series S. This is a game that really requires a CPU that's over 4 GHz, and the Series S is only 3.5, the Series X is 3.8. So it should run better on Series X than S, but I'm just going to give it that underclock to help it maintain full speed at the cost of frame rate. So same thing with this one, Properties, Editor, and then under the presets I'm going to go into the Editor, open an external editor, and then back in these individual settings tab, we have the set CPU overclock. So we're just gonna copy all of this code in here. Then paste it into our notepad here. And under the value, I wanna set this to 75% of the actual GameCube CPU speed. So that's going to be point. So that's gonna be 0.75. And I'm just going to save that. There we go. And just to make it so we don't have to create a new save file, I actually have a Rogue Squadron save right here that I'm going to put into my saves folder. So opening back up my USB drive, Dolphin emulator, GameCube folder, my USA folder. I'm going to put this Rogue Squadron save in right there so we could load right up to the Battle of Hoth. And you could do this with any game you want if you have saves already from another version of Dolphin, you could just drag them right in here. But same process once again, once you have everything configured and changed up, just close out a Dolphin, load up that user folder, and then in your USB drive, if you had to set your Dolphin INI file to read only, just uncheck that real quick, and then just drag it all over and replace anything that it needs to overwrite. And then back in the config folder, I'm going to set my Dolphin I and I to read only again. And there we go. So I'm just going to take the USB drive out of the computer, put it back in the Xbox. So going back into Dolphin, make sure those per game settings have taken effect here. Alright, so first up, Twin Snakes. Let's make sure that widescreen patch has taken effect in the widescreen setting, I mean. And there we go, so now we have a widescreen setting set just for Metal Gear, so that way we can use that widescreen code without it affecting any of our other games. And now if Snake doesn't look like a pencil. Perfect. So here we go, Rogue Squadron 2 running at 75% GameCube speed. 
and we are able to maintain full speed in the emulation, but you'll notice up in the upper right hand corner of the screen, my FPS counter is fluctuating from the 30s to the 50s, depending on how much of the terrain or action is going on screen. And this is just an example of sacrificing frame rate for that full speed performance so we cannot encounter any audio stuttering or things like that. So it's just a trade off you're going to have to make to play these more demanding games on an underpowered CPU. So the last thing I want to show for you all is Fantasy Star Online here. So we're just going to get the game set up. So we're just going to go to online game. And we're going to choose slot B for that network information file because we created a standard memory card in slot B, whereas if it's a GCI folder, it will crash. There we go. Let me just click on return to game. But now we just go to online game and create a character, register an account. And there we are, connected to the Schthack private PSO server on the Xbox Series S version of Dolphin here. So there we go, I am now loaded in. And there we go, so tests character on the private server. So cool stuff. But there you have it, Dolphin emulation on the Xbox Series X and S using the new beta Dolphin builds from Sir Mangler. So again, this is a bit more involved than other emulation projects on Xbox Series X and S, just because of how much you need to rely on the PC version of Dolphin to actually get it configured. But once you do so, you're going to be greeted with a full-fledged Dolphin experience that is just so great to see on the Xbox consoles, and a million times better than what you're ever going to see out of RetroArch Dolphin. But as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative and it helps you get your emulation projects up and running to your liking. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads of content coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and help us keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to helping us keep this place going, as I mentioned. And just a big shout out to everyone who has done so, so far. You are amazing, you are champs, just amazing support from all of you. Thank you so much. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.